Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining the talk. So this year, we're cele celebrating the 20 years of GCompre. So I will uh, explain you what we've been working on and what to expect this year. What... So let's start. Um, for those who don't know, GCompre is an educational suite for children from 2 to 10. With it, you can well, children can learn not everything, but almost, like from learning how to use a keyboard and mouse, but also uh, reading, writing, mathematics, physics, all kinds of science, and discover a lot of different things. And it's used uh, in primary schools all over the world. Uh, we've seen it used in schools in France, in Germany, Spain, India, Brazil, and so on. We also saw it uh, deployed by associations in uh, poor remote uh, villages in Africa, in Asia, and other places. So it, I, we don't do anything to track the users, so I cannot tell exactly the number of users we have, but from the few metrics I have, I can say for sure we can count it as million, a few million users, for sure. So. This year started, uh, the change started in February. Uh, February, I decided to make the full version binaries of Jcompre completely uh, free of cost for all platforms. It was a change I had in mind for a lot of time, I wanted to do that change, but uh, it was a big jump to do. So uh, in the beginning of the year, I, as I saw the situation starting to get bad with the coronavirus, I so uh, anticipated that it would be very good time to give this tool for every child in the world to can learn at home, so yeah. This was the uh, one day I wake up and say, okay, today let's do the switch. And I discussed with Johnny, the other co-maintainer, and within one, two days it was done. Um, so, but then the question was, uh, by making it uh, at no cost, how could I keep uh, working and uh, found my work on it? So I decided to go back on Patreon. Uh, I already had a Patreon page that I started when uh, I started to work on the graphics for Jcompre in 2015, but because it didn't work good, I left it alone and abandoned it a bit. But uh, it was a good time to try again. and. Hopefully, it does work uh, good enough for now. We don't have, I don't have yet that many patrons, but uh, hopefully there's uh, one company who deploys Gcompre on uh, pre-installed on hardware, and they agreed to support me on Patreon. So it helps to, at, for now, keep the same amount of work uh, same amount of time I can dedicate for that work. Uh, so, and then there was the lockdown effect in March when the lockdown was starting to be effective everywhere, almost in the world. We could see a uh, lot of blog posts from teachers all around recommending uh, per to parents to use Gcompre at home for homeschooling for the kids. Uh, we even have some mails from uh, teachers who previously bought the full version and they were asking if they didn't see uh, the news that we made it free and they were asking if we could uh, allow somehow the, their pupils to use it at home and we say, yeah, that's already done. They can download the full version now and yeah, let them uh, enjoy it. We also saw lots of uh, YouTube videos posted uh, by different random people who wanted to show Gcompre as a good alternative for homeschooling. Uh, 
you can just searching on YouTube and you will find a lot of funny and interesting results. Uh, yeah. So what to expect uh, very soon? Next release will finally be the 1.0 release that was waited by many people. The 1.0 because we restarted, uh, as you know, the rewrote the project from scratch, which started in 2014. And since then, it took some time to port all the activities. Uh, we don't have yet all the activities from the old version, but we actually have more activities in number, and we have the most important ones. We had, uh, we wanted to achieve a few milestones before doing that 1.0 release, but uh, we don't have all of them yet, but we have enough changes, uh, significant changes to decide to make it this year. And well, for the 20 years, it was also a good time to celebrate. Uh, so for the improvement that we'll have in the next release, uh, I will say after, but uh, the release planning, uh, we want to do string freeze in uh, about a week. So for September 14th, we plan to do the string freeze and I will provide beta packages for the translators to test their, or to check the context. Uh, we will do string freeze for, we think two months, which is a bit big, but uh, we have a lot of new strings to work on. And we also, I did a review all the existing strings uh, recently. So a lot of uh, translators will find a lot of fuzzy strings they will have to adapt or retranslate. So it's a lot, lot of work. So we will give them lot, uh, enough time to process. And uh, during that time, we also, it would be also a good time for everyone who want to provide the uh, missing voices for their, la their language. So if you, your language is miss still missing some voices and, and you feel like recording your voice, you're welcome to contribute, please do. Uh, Also, just before the string freeze, if some native English speakers want to make a f another round of review on the strings, you're welcome. There's still one week for that. So the main big, main big feature for next release will be the multiple data set. I already talked about it in uh, previous talk. It's been uh, long ongoing effort. We started more than a year ago, almost two years ago. And the feature is to allow to split the content of an activity into several parts of different uh, difficulty levels to make the activities more modular and more accessible uh, for different ages. I will explain how it works. So here's the main menu of jconfree. free Before we had just this uh, tool icon for the main configuration, and we had uh, the same icon in some activities for their uh, activity configuration. Now we have this new icon, purple with three lines, which is for the activity settings. It contains both uh, the activity options, but also the multiple data set options for Is it better now? Voice is better? OK, good. Yes. So good. I'll continue. So in the main menu, what I was saying, the 
we have uh, star icons on each activity to represent its difficulty level. But now with multiple data sets, some activities can have two icons. One, the first one showing the minimum difficulty of uh, the activated data set, and the second one, the maximum difficulty. So you can have an idea of the range. So when clicking uh, on an activity settings, you will find this menu with the data set uh, panel option uh, open by default, showing the available data set that you can enable or dis disable by clicking on the respective icon. And uh, there's a second tab with the options if there are some options. And uh, you can click cancel to just close without saving your changes, save to save your changes and go back to the menu, or save and start to save your changes and start the activity. Here you started the activity and you find again the same activity settings icon inside the activity. If you click on it from the activity, then it will open uh, directly in the options tab, not the data set one, because usually we expect users to want to set up the data set before starting the activity and changing the options is more something they would change while using the activity, typically. So here you can just close without saving or save and return to the activity. Another change that was needed to implement the multiple data set feature, uh, in the main configuration of the software, there's this uh, difficulty filter option. Uh, it was used to filter activities uh, according to their level uh, of difficulty, but now uh, it also filters data set so if, for example, I select one and two star difficulty, uh, it will filter activities which has no content for uh, this level. And it will also that, uh, automatically filter the data sets and enable the corresponding ones. So now you see numbers with dice as only one and two stars, while before it, has, it had one and three. And if you go in the menu, you see all the other data sets are hidden. Uh, we also have new activities for the next release. The first one is uh, gravity. This one I decided to work on because uh, I wanted to replace an existing activity we had called intro gravity, uh, which had a lot of, uh, several issues which was not really fixable. The main issue is that the concept of the activity was to change the size of the planet to move a spaceship, which by itself is a bit of a weird concept, and it was very hard to use, and it did not uh, scale at all to phone screens, so I scrapped it and restarted a different one from scratch for gravity. In this one, it's more simple and easy to use, it was just uh, random planets in uh, both sides of the screen going top down and you have to move the spaceship and it will be attracted to the planet according to the gravity force and the arrows on the top, the lengths change depending on the gravity. So it's more easy and fun to use than the previous one and it gives good sense of gravity for the kids. The next new activity is baby keyboard. This one was request, requested by a user who wanted something very simple for his baby to get started using a keyboard. Uh, now, uh, it's the simplest activity possible. Just type any key on the keyboard and it will type the corresponding character and play the voice if there's one. Uh, the next activity is Learn Digits. This one was requested by uh, Emmanuel, one of our contributors. He, uh, it's based on an uh, exercise. He, this contributor is a teacher for primary school, so it's based on an exercise he's using uh, in his school to teach digits. So we display a number here. We play the voice, and the kid has to just click the number of dots and press OK to validate the answer, and uh, 
there's also options to instead of display digit display some dots or display a hand to count to learn the value of each number and associate it with the voice uh, next new activities are learn addition and learn subtraction, which are derivative of learn uh, digits. It's the same, but just we show a simple addition or subtraction to just to learn the concept of those operations. And I kept the best for the end. Uh, the new last new activity is analog electricity, which was the most uh, missing one we had uh, from the old. Uh, version of Gcompre that was not ported yet. And now we have it thanks to my wife Aishwarya who decided to work on it this summer since she has a electronics degree, electronics engineer degree, and she want to work on uh, software development now. It was a good exercise to practice our skills. So we have a feature parity, exact feature parity with the old activity with first level with those three components, battery, bulb, and switch. Uh, second level with a bit more components like rheostat, another uh, kind of switch, two-point switch, and the connection point. And uh, third level with, again, more components like resistor, red LED. And yeah, we have same features, but we also have a few improvements compared to the old version. Like uh, you can see all the uh, wires share the same color if they share the same connection point, which helps to understand the circuit, how it works. Uh, now, um, another improvement is that uh, we have uh, we can rotate components we can uh, zoom in zoom out and pan the canvas these features we come from the digital electricity activity we had which we can we could uh, copy some of the code but it was not modular enough to can reuse it we had to have copy uh, another good improvement is we have the information uh, of each component. If you click on the component and click on the information icon, you will have a text explaining what this component does and how it's used. And uh, another improvement is if you do a very weird circuit which should not work or is uh, called illegal as it's called in the engine we're using, well, then we will display a warning message explaining that there's a voltage loop or source shorted by wire and then that you should uh, fix your circuit to make the simulation work good. And of course, the bulb will break if there's too much current in it. And uh, same for the red LED. If you use it without a resistor, you have bad surprise. The next improvement is keyboard support. We fixed all the focus issues and uh, we added uh, New keyboard controls, um, and I added new images for several activities, and made lay layout improvements again for several activities, and made countless bug fixes, bug fixes and usability improvements all around. So that's it. Uh, thank you. I want to thank everyone, all the contributors, all my patrons supporting my work. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, I'm not sure we'll have time, but let's see. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. We are out of time, so okay. no questionnaires at the moment. If you have any questions, please contact Timothy directly. Thank you, Timothy. That was a great talk. Yeah, thank you, too. And yeah, don't hesitate to give questions okay. uh, directly. <laughs>